Hi, and welcome to our next video in our uh, series on building an electronic structure program. In video 3.2, we're going to talk about the technical details of how to build our overlap matrix. In the previous video, we discussed a general strategy, and now we're going to figure out how we can implement that into our program. Our strategy for doing this uh, is a little bit grander than it needs to be, and that's because I'm anticipating having angular momentum at a later date in the program and I want to build in all of the appropriate sub-functions that we're going to need. So while we could do this in a little bit, a few less lines of code, uh, we're going to do this now so that when we write our next set of functions, it's a little bit easier. Okay? And so we're going to build three functions in this video. The first is we're going to have the build overlap function, which takes in a basis set, and we'll return out an n by n matrix, S, which will be our overlap. And that's going to loop over all of the basis functions and e to the primitive Gaussians. This build overlap function we'll call our G overlap, which will take as its input two primitive Gaussians and return a number, which is the integral of their overlap. Finally, this program will call G prod 1D three times because this program will take two one dimensional Gaussians, one in X, one in Y, one in Z. And that's going to output the amplitude of their overlap. And we'll sum these and weight these appropriately here, return it to G overlap. G overlap will return its value to S, and S will build the matrix. So as usual, we're going to start with the simplest program, the one lowest on the food chain first, and then build our way up. So let's hop on over into MATLAB. And let's see here, edit gprod1d. Please make this function. Okay, function E equals G prod 1D, G1, X1, alpha 1, X2, alpha 2. So we're going to take in the uh, X component of Gaussian 1, X component of Gaussian 1, X, <coughs> X component of uh, Gaussian 2, and alpha in the X component of alpha 2 of Gaussian 2. All right. Okay, so now we're just going to implement the Gaussian product theorem. P equal alpha 1 plus alpha 2. Q equal alpha 1 times alpha 2 divided by P. Capital P, the, the location of our new Gaussian, is equal to uh, alpha 1 times x1 plus alpha 2 times x2 divided by P, and Q equal to X1 minus X2. All right. And so using the notation from Helgocker and Trailer, KAB equals the exponent minus Q times Q, oops, capital Q, squared, and output for, for an S orbital, and we're done. And that's it. That's all we need. So let's just save that and give it a quick test. Uh, 0, 3, 1, 1. Make sure that it works. All right, so I'm just going to add in a couple of semicolons there so that we don't get all that output. Aha, yes, there we go. And we get the overlap. Okay, great. So that's our gprod1d function, and we want that to be called by our g overlap function. So let's build that. Edit g overlap. Build that one. Function s equal g overlap g1 g2. Okay. All right, so we're going to take in two primitive Gaussians and return the overlap value uh, of those. And so in order to do that, we're going to call our gprod1d function two, three times. We're going to say ex equals gprod1d g1.x g1.alpha g1, g1 g1.x not, because that's how we call it in the basis function, g1 
g2 dot alpha or sorry g2 dot x naught and g2 dot alpha e y we do the g prod 1 d on the y coordinates dot y zero g2 dot y naught g2 dot alpha and EZ equal G prod 1D G1 dot Z naught G1 dot alpha G2 dot Z naught and G2 dot alpha. All right, so we have those three numbers, and now we can just, uh, so we have the amplitude of the overlap, but we now need to uh, compute the total value for that, which is going to be S equal to EX times EY times EZ times the square root of let's see, make sure we get this right square root of pi divided by G1 dot alpha plus G2 dot alpha Carrot three, right? So we have three of them multiplied together, so we're just applying the Gaussian product theorem three times. And now we're finally going to multiply this by the normalization constant. G1 dot n times G2 dot n. Okay. So let's save that and we'll give this a try. I've already loaded our basis set here, so let's do uh, S equal G overlap basis one dot G1 and basis 1 dot g1. If we've constructed this right, this should effectively be 1 and we made a little typo up here. Let's save that and we'll try again. Great, and we get that the overlap is in fact 1 with that semicolon. Okay, so now we have our g overlap and the last function that we need to do is we need to build the build overlap a larger program which will loop over all of the primitives and all the basis functions. So edit build overlap and let's make that. So function s equal build overlap and this is going to take in our whole basis set cell array. Okay. First thing we need to do is we need to determine the number of bases, and that's going to be size basis two. So we want the number of uh, columns in our basis array. All right. Now we're going to say four n equals one through n b. We're going to loop over them a second time. Zero. Now we're going to loop over all of the primitives. So see here, MBA equal one to basis n dot n for m d b equals one basis m dot n s sub n m equal s sub n m plus G overlap basis n dot G in BA basis M dot G in BB. So that will give us the, the number, and now we need to multiply that number by the appropriate set of contraction coefficients. So times basis n. Uh, dot C NBA times basis basis there we go M dot C NBB okay, make sure we've got all the parentheses there we do all right and now we just need to finish looping over each of the primitives <clears throat> and now we need to loop there we go finish our loops and we're done
And that should be it. So let's go ahead and see if that builds us an NB by NB matrix. Build overlap S equal build overlap basis. And there we go. We get our overlap matrix for two hydrogens located two angstroms apart, or sorry, two bore apart in our 6-31G basis set. Okay. So if you join me on the next video, uh, we'll use some of these same functions to build the kinetic energy matrix. Okay, hope to see you then.